Welcome to Clearwater County Podcasts, an ongoing conversation about the issues that matter to residents and businesses of Clearwater County. Audio versions are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and other streaming services. Welcome. This is Jerry Pratt. I'm here with Jim Duncan. He's with the Clearwater uh, Trails Initiative. Um, Jim, I'm glad to have you here. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, nice snowy week and cold. Yes. Uh, people are looking forward to get out on the, some of our trails that uh, finally have some snow on them. Uh, yes. What does the Clearwater uh, Trails Initiative do? So Clearwater Trails Initiative is a not-for-profit society. Uh, we've been around quite a while, this version since about 2014, and we became a society in, in 2017. The, generally, we do some construction of trails, presently working in the Meadows area, southwest of Rocky, but we're also a lot about the process, the process of approving and planning trails and working with other stakeholders in the area, like government, um, like industry, um, agriculture, as in people that have grazed their cattle out there, and the trappers as well. The, Clearwater Trails has always been working in the, in the we call it the vacant crown land in Clearwater County. It's the green area, but it's not the public land use zones. It's those areas between here and Nordegg that everybody's out there in, whether it's industry, agriculture, recreationists, et cetera. So that's where we work and try and build some sustainable, sustainable trails. Um, a main focus for us has been trying to do something with these trails that uh, reduces the or mitigates the impact of so many stakeholders there. So an example of that is taking logging roads from West Fraser, who've been out there on the landscape doing their logging, and turning those logging roads into trails so that when they finish logging, the road becomes a trail and it can stay a trail forever, or maybe West Fraser needs it sometime in the future and we can turn it back into a road for them. So of course, that's a uh, been a very tricky process with the government. They don't, you know, we've never had anything like this before. It hasn't been, there's not any legal way to, or was never any legal way to do this because basically you need to preserve that trail to protect it from other development. You need a, a disposition on the trail. Then if it's put on top of the existing one, you know, that's something that's never done. And you really, you know, we weren't interested in taking away the disposition totally from industry or other people that are out there. We want to be able to share it. So that's been part of the process as well, finding our way through that kind of maze of, of new things. And the new Trails Act that's out there now, that's all part of that, right? That's that's putting legislation in place that works in this vacant crown land, something that's never been in place before. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, we're, we're blessed with many pl beautiful places to go and see, and many people are out uh, on their OHVs, on their bikes, sometimes snowmobiles. Um, but they're often accessing or using even the oil lease roads right. or the logging roads in order to get to those places. Um, but the my understanding is after West Fraser, for example, once they're done in an area, they don't need that logging road for many years because they, right. they then seed and, and, yeah. and it won't come back for decades. They're required to normally reclaim that road. Yes. And uh, so you guys are, instead of having them reclaim it completely, you're trying to convert right. it over into a trail, but still somewhat under the West Fraser disposition. And yeah, it's, it's not totally clear to me yet how that's going to work. And we've, this is our, our first attempt. And we've just recently completed about 55 kilometers of trail in the Meadows area. And it's now been designated, but I haven't actually seen the paperwork to know what the legalese is, is okay. on that, right? So I, I don't, it's not really clear to me, but I, from my understanding, yes, there is a, a disposition on it that, that will supersede for at least this period in time what West Fraser has. Um, but in some cases, nothing is done with the road. It's just turned into a trail too. Okay. Um, it, but you're right. In other cases, it's partially reclaimed. So it's narrow just for trail width as opposed to full road width. And, I mean, those uh, roads were built so that semis could drive on them. Yes. So, you know, being able to handle side by sides and, right. and so on can work. Uh, the first project uh, was um, west of Caroline in the Rig Street area. Yes. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that one? Well, it, again, again, that one was more about process for us. We want to do something in the vacant crown as as. Clearwater Trails Initiative got going. And we picked Rig Street because it is probably the busiest area or one of the busiest areas in Clearwater County in terms of, especially long weekends when there's we get our largest influx of visitors where there's 
industry and there's lots of oil and gas there, lots of logging, lots of grazing, trappers, and of course, many, many recreationists. And, and the lots, only places they can go, they, you're, and you're right, you're, you talked about how the roads are used and the oil leases and the pipelines, but that's all there is for cleared land in most of those areas. And that's why people use them is that they need to really, to get around, they have, they have to use those right-of-ways. And unfortunately, those right-of-ways often are very straight um, especially the pipelines, the cut lines from right. seismic, and they don't always cross the best terrain for summertime OHVs. Winter and snowmobile use, it's fine, but that's where we see those, you know, picture type issues or examples of damage, right? When there's too many quads on a on right. a wet area where because it's just a straight path across the muskeg up to dry land again, and it's. So we would, you know, in that case, we were trying to do something about build it around. So we did, yes, we did a project in the back there. There was no way to put a, a disposition or a designation on that trail. Um, we were just kind of trying to do the right thing and coordinate with industry, follow through that process again with the Alberta government of getting at least approval to do it, even though it's not going to be a protected trail. Like, And by that, I mean, we could build some new trail or, or have a trail through an area, but somebody could come along and build an oil lease on top of it. There was no way to stop right. that in the, in the past. Now, if you want to designate a trail, you can do that. You can at least prevent something from going right on top of the trail. It might end up beside it or, or the trail might disappear while logging is done or something, but then it's put back in place by the people who do the logging after. So th that's just the type of protection there. So um, yeah, again, like I said, it was a, we were finding our way. And back in that day, the, uh, you know, there was funding was really tough to get. There was nothing from the government for sure. Um, we lucked into a national program mm -hmm. and found some money there, you know, a fairly large sum, I think 250,000 or something that got us to be able to build a bunch of trail to, or, or basically follow existing pathways, but fix them up so they're more passable. And, and a big part of it for us is not just the trail, but the bridges, right? The crossing the water in a much more protective manner, finding ways to do that with bridges or culverts or uh, even in the muskegs where you lay down the mat, matting and put dirt on top of it and that sort of thing, just to make it a more sustainable trail. Um, and for us, it's always been, let's make these kind of family trails, right? We don't want only trails that really experienced expert riders can do, you know, up steep hills and through very wet areas. We want something that entire families can use and, and enjoy and, and have and, good days with them. And we've seen that change. Like the, yes. the people that are coming out and enjoying the area, it, we're now seeing more, it's three generations, it's grandma right. and grandpa right. and, and then, you know, people in their 30s and 40s and then their kids. So it truly is a family affair. So they're coming out on their side-by-sides, four or five people right. going on to enjoy the sights and the views yeah. that we have and, yeah. um, and having these trails that are built to accommodate them and certainly make better water crossings. Right. <laughs> um, I think that's better for everyone. Y yes, you're, you're right. It is better for everyone, better for the environment, um, better for us economically. If you build a trail to a higher standard in the first place, there's less maintenance on it in the future. Um, for us, it's always been easier to find funding for the capital side of the project to build the trail. It's much more difficult. It has been much more difficult to find the funding to maintain it right. over the years after. So we tend to try and build it a higher standard to you know, use bigger equipment, big trackos and, and a cat as opposed to guys in shovels and quads and a little dump trailer to, to, to do a better job of making that trail last longer it, it, and like today's machines are so much bigger and heavier too, right? That, right. Uh, you need a better standard of trail for the types of machines that are, that are on those as well. And uh, one of the things that I really appreciate, uh, in addition to, you know, the, the trail construction has been a little bit on the education side. Uh, right. We've got the Sasquatch here. Yes. Um, uh, Clearwater Trails Initiative has been an active user of, yes. of, Sa of the Sasquatch symbol to help people know you know what, this is a good place to camp, this right. is not a good place to camp, these are trails that are good and usable. Yes. And yeah, that, That's worked well. We did some experiments back in the day on Rig Street down there west of Caroline where we actually went with the oil companies, you know, they were part of the stakeholder process down there as well and said, do you guys have some leases? They're maybe abandoned, there's no equipment on, but you're, you know, they don't actually abandon them, sorry, they're just suspended, but they're they're not in use. And can we designate those as, as campsites in your eyes? And we found a few of those that they said yes, so we could put up a nice Sasquatch sign that said this is a good place to camp. And there's other sites that they were more leery of, right? Their people were camping on them, but they had 
uh, maybe a sour gas riser or something or, or equipment that was potentially being checked every day and in, in use and they didn't need people camping very close to it. So that worked out. We had, you know, like I say, we did some of that. Um, people were quite accommodating. We found really that if you gave them a, an option where to go, they were okay if you said no somewhere else. So we didn't want to put up a bunch of no camping signs. You know, the Sasquatch says don't camp here. We also wanted to have those close by other places where it is okay to camp so that people aren't fed up with just seeing the no signs. They want to, they know that if they go a half a mile down the road, they're going to find a place that's fine to camp. And the Sasquatch has become quite popular. Uh, other counties yes. have adopted our Sasquatch yes. uh, to use for similar things of telling people, you know, the good trails and the good places to right. camp and really about being good stewards of our land as you're out here enjoying it. Yes. Yeah. Um, so the Rig Street project was done. It's been several years since yes. most of the work's been done there. And now you've moved on to an area called the meadow or the ponds? Me the meadows area. The meadows, it's, sorry. And the meadows kind of, ref it's just a, a part of that world. It's, uh, I guess, geographically, it's kind of between where the Ram River runs into the North Saskatchewan, west of there, and then east of where Ram Mountain is. So there's quite a large chunk of okay. country there. Um, basically, our trail starts on kilometer 38 of the North Fork Road. There's a bit of a staging area there, uh, kiosk, uh, and some signage, etc. And from there, the trail would go north toward the North Saskatchewan River. It's 20 some kilometers to the to North Saskatchewan River and then loops back and ends up back basically where it started again. Um, part of the trail is on, like I said, is on roads. Some of it we actually construct a new trail through the bush uh, just to connect other trails, other roads, etc. And uh, we've installed about eight bridges along that trail so far. And like I said, we've finished about a 55 kilometer loop that gets us back around to the... And being okay where it is, just off North Saskatchewan and very close right. to Ram River, uh, be a very scenic drive. It is. There's some some great views on the... There's, the trail goes across some clear cuts over some high ground. So, you know, it's it's certainly a very... Uh, a lot a mosaic of different habitat types there, whether it's recent clear cut or regenerating clear cut or virgin forest. Um, and like I said, some hilltops, you can actually see the Tauntaun Bridge very clearly, the one on the north side on the north side of North Saskatchewan on the rail trail, right from, from the Saunders Alexo side where we our trail hits the river there. So close. We just need a bridge and we there need somewhere a bridge. to cross, <laughs> cross the ferry. North Saskatchewan. Yeah, cross there, yeah. Oh ferry. That'd ferry. be a business opportunity for it somebody. Is. <laughs> oh that would that'd be good. Um, uh, do you have more work at, at the Meadows that you plan to do? Yes, we've, uh, so far all our funding has come through FRIA, it's called, the Forest okay. Resource Improvement Association of Alberta. And basically that funding is all logging companies, as they harvest timber, are required to put some funds into the FRIA program. And FRIA puts that money back out into improvement projects that help the forest. So our okay. trails have qualified for an improvement program in the forest, and we've secured funding through that. So various local companies, West Fraser, uh, Strachan Forest Products, et cetera, um, have put money away for years and need to spend it on some projects. So this is the beauty of the FRIA program, is the actual, it doesn't just go in there and get doled out by FRIA, the company that puts the money in gets to decide what project it wants okay. to spend it on. So it, it can be a trail, but it can be things like uh, education for students, uh, the Crossley Memorial Forest, the uh, research forest out at Strachan there, that's funded by the same FRIA programs okay. as well. So uh, grizzly bear studies, uh, caribou up in northern Alberta, all those things are funded through the FRIA programs. It's basically like the old stumpage fees they used to charge for, okay. for forestry. It's, it helps to, uh, say, regenerate the forest and also to do some other good things out there. And uh, in addition to the... Um CTI trails, uh, I believe that funding is helping a little bit with Baseline Mountain and also with Black Mountain and the Nordeg area. I'm not sure about uh, Baseline Mountain, it, not recently, but I, and definitely, yes, Nordeg. There's a new project out there called Black Mountain, you're right, and it's developed by the Nordeg Off-Road Cycling Association, or NORCA. And we've been helping them out a bit on that, kind of with the administrative side of it, just using our experience with the, the approvals process, the planning process, the application for funding, which they're through the FRIA program as well, and help them out and get going. It's a, a very large project there. They're mm -hmm. a couple of years into it now, and I th believe they completed about 15 kilometers of, of trail out there this summer. Um, mountain bike trail, like you right. said, and uh, very technical trail, jumps, etc. cetera. Um, I think it's a, a great project, probably gonna add a lot to the Nordic community as well. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to see how it goes. Um, 
uh, after you do the meadows, are, is there any other areas you're looking at uh, to go? I mean, the, well, there's, we have so much land. We do. Um, <laughs> and a lot of trails on them. I guess for, for us, there's there's still lots we can do at the meadows. Uh, you know, there's area, other areas we can connect. We have a, a kind of, I would say, like a spine trail or a main loop. So there's now, we may want to divide that main loop into shorter loops so people can do half days instead of full days or, okay. or have a side loop off of that somewhere. So we're going to explore that a little bit, uh, see if we can find some more shorter loops there. Of course, you know, where there is some planning going on. I Clearwater Trails Initiatives, along with a bunch of other stakeholders, sits on what's called the Nordic Planning uh, Subcommittee, which is a new initiative from the government of Alberta. Okay. And it's kind of looking at planning trails in the Nordic area mostly, but they've kind of loop CTI and the meadows into that part of the plan as well. And I would call it, you know, sub-regional planning, I guess would be the, maybe the best way to describe it. So it's recreational management in a spe specific area that the government wants to work on. Um, so, you know, we're involved in that. Uh, and if, so part of that is connecting all these. So there's various groups and clubs that are involved in that subcommittee and they all have their projects or their areas that they like to work on and, and develop trails in. And they're, we're maybe a little bit ahead of them and we've done some, you know, building a trail. Some of them have done some, but they're more getting into finding out what's, what trails are there and if they're suitable to improve and, and put into a designated program just like the Meadows Trail has been designated. And as they work through that process, the, I think the government and, and it's been the you know, talk there is, we start, need to start connecting those as well, right? Connect the Meadows area to another area, uh, you know, connect Nordig all the way west to Bighorn Dam if we can, those sorts of things as well. That's part of the kind of the overall mothership, if you will, of the trails is it connect various areas. People can start doing more than just a single day trip. Right. They can go for multiple days or camp out on their OHVs even and, and go from one area to the other. And the potential of connecting, you know, hundreds of kilometers of trails yeah. and, and these little individual places that have offshoots and scenic yeah. areas, but get them all linked together. That's going to be so amazing for it would, our activity out here. It would. That's That would really set us apart here in, in Clearwater, you know, from the rest of the province. Thinking. And I think that's important in terms of economic development. You need to find that niche that sets you apart from everybody else and, you know, makes it that much more attractive to come here. And, um, and like you said, people come here and they, not just a trail ride, there's other, lots of other activities they can do too. So we need to provide those campsites, those right. other amenities that go along with these trails as well. So that's always also part of the plan, right, is, is the campground development, uh, whether it's rustic camping with the kind of the, the like the old uh, uh, random camping, uh, or if it's an actual campground, or, and some of those are popping up too, yeah. right, or are expanding as well. Out There's there, so. more demand from both customers and investors to yes. have some of those type of services out there. Yeah. Uh, so before we end, is there anything you'd like people to know? Uh, how do people volunteer with your group? Well, <laughs> COVID really threw a wrench into everybody, right? Um, we went from having all, we used to have these big meetings where all kinds of people would come and they actually turned into a lot of big philosophy sessions. We didn't get a lot of work done for quite a few years, but um, now we more or less operate as a board, doing our projects, working on things. Uh, I think we're getting back to the point where we're gonna start looking for some more volunteers or people okay. to be involved with. I think Clearwater Trails Initiative is, is more geared towards the, you know, we'd like to, yeah, we, we do build trails, but you know, we're not really the, the best at that. Our we're, our talents or our the expertise on our board is more around the the approvals process. The whether that's fisheries or or the historic resources or whatever it takes to get the the, the plan in place, as opposed to the actual you know going out there managing contracts and stuff. So there's all. I think we need to start tying our groups together. The the other clubs and, and groups that are out there that that have that expertise, and everybody can find the the best job that or what they're best at in terms of developing and managing trails and, and kind of work from there. Um, sorting out, you know, we've also been sorting out a bit of the funding for maintenance, right? The, there is funding available now. It's not a, a lot, but um, the government has designated the Alberta Off Highway Vehicle Association as a, they've been providing funds to them and they dole, dole out funds to groups okay. that are sort of, they're kind of the mothership of all trail clubs in, in the province of OHV trail clubs. Um, so there is some funding for maintenance of coming available through them now on, a, on an annual basis. So I think we're going to, 
you know, work towards that as well and, and start to, as we, you know, as these new trails start to be used and we see where we need to do maintenance, et cetera, we'll figure out how much that's going to cost and, and the time we need to spend on that and, and start work towards getting more funding and sort of uh, on a long-term basis, right? Annual funding in place to, to work on those things. Um, volunteers are still going to be needed out there. We always need people to check trails, cut those trees off, pick up a bit of garbage maybe or something. Um, but on the construction side of it, the, you know, the days are probably gone where you have people with shovels building a trail and power saws. We just can't build a good enough trail that right. way, right? We need to get that bigger equipment in there and hire a, a real contractor to, to do the work. And uh Clearwater Trails Initiative has a website with some of the maps on it? No, nothing nope. to that effect yet. We have a bit of a link through the county and okay. that's, I'm working on that right now with the government of Alberta too. They, they have a new uh, guide out last year and I didn't know it existed until just recently, but it's called the Public Lands Trail Guide. And it was, it's a summer public lands trail guide. So it's providing some information and maps, et cetera. So that's, there's a new version of that coming out this summer. So I'm, I'm learning about that, making a submission to that on behalf of Clearwater Trails. And I'm hoping that yes, it's, those maps are all important. People, we need to find places where they can access those maps or download them. Um, as, because like the Meadows area, there's only a few spots where you get actual cell reception. Right. So you really can't rely on... You need to download uh, them before yeah, you go. that's right. You need the, the Avenza app or a similar app to download to. And, and, and that's part of the plan as well, right? We have to work through that. And we've been lax on that. It's not, until the trail is designated, you really can't put it on a right. map, right? So we've just recently designated some of these trails. Now we can put them on a map and make that map public knowledge. Which is what makes it a little difficult. Like I I want to promote the Rig Street area, for example. Yes. I mean, it is certainly well used. The trails have been built wonderfully, but because they're not designated by the right. province, it's difficult for us to promote that because they're not official trails. That's right, exactly. Um, yeah. But uh, the Meadows seems to be overcoming that problem. Yeah, and you know, in hindsight, the Meadows was a, a better area to build trails in, far less industrial activity. Really logging is the only thing up in the Meadows. There is a little bit of oil activity there. There's one kind of major pipeline, but, um, and the, the ground is much better in the Meadows, very rocky, not much topsoil, easy to construct and maintain right. a trail there. Rig Street, yeah, struggled a lot more there because so, a lot of marsh and a lot of yes, yeah, right, yeah, a little bit. And and the rights away right away is there, like I said, are straight linear, you know, they go, and they go through all the terrain. They're all built in the winter, right? So, right. Yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing what the Clearwater Trails Initiative does, and uh, I look forward to promoting your trails. Thank you very much, Sherry. Enjoyed being here today. Okay.